Hi there, it's GCSE results day, so I've now had an opportunity to have a look at the grey boundaries for the Edexcel mass papers, and I've looked at both the IGCSE uh, grey boundaries down here on the left, and also the GCSE grey boundaries on the right. So what I've done, first of all, I've compared the higher papers at the top, and lower down I've compared the foundation papers. Now, as you probably know, uh, all of the papers now are graded from not grades 9 to 1. And for the IGCSE, both the papers higher and foundation, we have two papers, 100 marks each, so those are out of 200. And whereas with the GCSE, both the higher and the foundation, we have three papers, each out of 80, so that's 240 in total. So what I've done, I've just compared the percentages for both. So I just want to have a look at these in turn. So starting off comparing the higher papers. Now, uh, as you know, four is a basic pass. And really at this level, um, to get a four, there's very little in it. You needed 20% to pass the IGCSE and 21% to pass the GCSE. So really, if you're trying to make your decision based on trying to get a four, there's very little in it and uh, very little in it for a grade five, a bit more in it for a grade six. Um, to the nearest whole percentage, that was actually a 5% difference, um, e each time in favor of the IGCSE. Now, what's been interesting this year is just how much lower the percentages were needed to get the grades seven, eights, and nine for the IGCSE. Now, you know, there's a lot in it. Now, my understanding is that um, the second IGCSE paper was considered to be very difficult and that's for the IGCSE and hence why these grade boundaries are lower this year. So I think it's probably fair to say this is a bit of a one-off where we've got such low, higher grade boundaries for the IGCSE. But, um, you know, it's interesting. It's the first time we've, we've had the IGCSE grade boundaries. And I think the worry was their grade boundaries might be higher. So the fact that they've come in lower, uh, for those of you who are lucky enough to be able to choose to do the IGCSE, based on this summer's paper, um, the IGCSE looks a good bet. Now, with regard to the foundation, uh, there's very little in it. You can see that consistently the uh, IGCSE foundation paper is just 2% better each time. So really very little in it if you're trying to um, make a decision based on those two papers uh, if you're just really just looking at it from the point of view of grey boundaries. Now the other thing that's then worth considering if you've got a reset or you're taking the exam next year whether you're IGCSE or GCSE and you're looking just to pass to get a grade four is whether you want to do the higher or the foundation and, and these are consistent so really what you've got to bear in mind if you do the higher paper, you need to get about 20%, whether it's the IGCSE or the higher. Whereas with the foundation paper to get a grade four, um, you need to get about 55 to 57%. So, um, yeah, it really, I think it really depends on how you feel about things. If you get demotivated not being able to do a lot of the paper, um, then perhaps the GCSE, uh, the higher paper isn't for you. But, you know, these are low, low levels. So if you are quite good at just mastering a few topics or picking your way around a paper and sort of st staying robust, then maybe the, um, the higher paper is better for you. But uh, if you like to be succeeding more often than not, then perhaps the foundation paper is the paper for you. Uh, I hope that helps. Uh, if you've got any queries, you know, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you.